sister, look at me. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Two Guys on Beer. I'm Johnny Bellata. This is Dave Monterana, and we're coming to you from where else? National Mechanics in Old City, Philadelphia. And moving into a little bit of uh, uh, an older school ancient recipe and Heather Ale today. And um, this is the product of Scotland, it's the Kelpie Seaweed Ale. Yeah, so. Um First of all, we've talked about Scottish groots before, and these are the ancient of the ancient beers. The way these are brewed is probably um, very close to how beer was brewed all throughout the Middle Ages um, and most of Europe. It's it's not hopped. Um, it, they use these groot bags that contain like yarrow and um, and, and elderberry and sweet. What's it called? Um, sweet kale, dill. Sweet gale, yeah. Sweet gale and um, rosemary and things like this. And that's what they would use to provide sort of the flavor that was replaced by hops. Um, and this particular product in certain parts of Scotland, uh, like 400 and some years ago, they actually used to grow all of their cereal crops in a bed of seaweed. Yeah. Um, and that lent a very specific flavor to, you know, the barley that was growing up. And which they made in a beer, obviously. So what these guys do is they actually add um, bladder rack black seaweed into the mash tun along with organic barley and it's supposed to approximate the flavor of what the barley growing up with the seaweed would taste like. So this is something, this should be something interesting. Um, so it, this is um, four and a half percent. Love those people. Yeah. Four and a half percent alcohol by volume. It is, um, te it's technically a Scottish Groot or a, a um, what was it? A Scottish Groot or a Heather Ale? Heather Ale, yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Now, I'm really interested to this, try this. this brewery, this brewery also uh, did the Elderberry Black Ale that we had had before, and a lot of these ales that you have from Scotland, especially Heather Ales and Scottish Groot Ales, they're they're, they're considered healing uh, healing ales. They were used to heal influenza and other uh, different ailments uh, in ancient times because they were pretty much made up of distillation of uh, local herbs and spices and things like that. So um, I'm hoping that this is a little healing. I think that, uh, you know, Joe needs some healing. We don't know exactly know what kind of healing Joe needs. What kind of healing do you need, Joe? Sexual healing. Sexual healing? Yeah. Don't we all need a little bit of that? I need to release these to fill it come. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this has a, the characteristic in its nose of a of like a, almost a malty stout. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, there's a little bit of like, sweet, there's a little bit of like the chocolate on it, like, yeah. and, and caramel, which is interesting because this is a group beer. And it's a little roasted, a little roasted uh, scent, so very dark. Let's give it a taste. A lot crisper than I thought it was going to be. Interestingly, I mean, like, the color is, is approaching that of like a brown ale or a porter. Interestingly enough, like, I guess I was expecting something different, and what you got is a very, it's almost like a very crisp porter flavor. It's yeah, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't have the malt characteristic of a porter, and where you feel all that malt in the beginning, and and uh, it bitters at the end, you get a very good, uh, consistent mouthfeel uh, with it. Its flavor stays throughout. It's um, it's an interesting beer, and it's something that even dark as it is, uh, is kind of refreshing. And I and could probably only I could drink a lot of this. It is only four and a half percent. I mean, it's a very light beer despite its color. Um, I, you know, <laughs> it's difficult to rate because a lot of the brews that come out of this company, um, like the the, the Frock Heather Ale mm -hmm. and um, the Elderberry Ale, they're very they're very unique in their flavor profile. And this one is a really good beer, but that seaweed isn't lending it any specifically interesting taste. No, no, no. It's not. No. I mean, I'd have to taste a little bit of kelp before. So what's your rating? You know, I mean, like, I think it's, I still think it's a fantastically produced beer. I would put this up at, like, 86? 86. 88, something like that. I mean, like, I think it's still a really nice to drink beer. Yeah, it is. I'm giving it 85, and uh, I think that it, it'll live there uh, for right now, and we'll see uh, what else we can get from uh, another good beer from uh, the other Craig Mill Brewery in Strathaven, Love England. So. Um, so thanks for joining us. Uh, we'd like to tell you about uh, all of our antics and uh, stuff that we're doing. Uh, you can check that out on Twitter at twitter.com slash TGOB. You can also find us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash 
Two Guys on Beer, and uh, we'd like to thank National Mechanic once again for hosting us for Two Guys on Beer. I'm Johnny Bellotta. I'm Dave Moderato. I'd love to see you again. Enjoy some beer. I'm a papa, look at me. Mama, papa, 